What's up, renderheads? Will Gibbons here, and we're back with another Keyshot rendering tutorial. And today, we're gonna be rendering none other than, that's right, hand sanitizer. Okay, guys, so you know this drill by now, probably, but if you're new here, the first thing you wanna do is head on over to willgibbons.com downloads, pop your email address in, hit submit, and that takes you to the file vault so you can get the project files to follow along with this tutorial. Now we are rendering hand sanitizer, but I thought we we're gonna have a little bit of fun with it. We want this product to look premium because uh, that's what makes people buy and part of rendering and uh, being creative with our product visualization is to make something look as appealing as possible. So we're gonna be going for a shot that's either somewhat like this or something that's gonna be a little bit more along the lines of a traditional spirits rendering uh, approach. Maybe something that's got a bit of a reflective ground plane what else we have here? Something maybe a little bit along the lines of this right here. This is pretty traditional, but very effective. And so I'm thinking of taking, you know, your traditional hand sanitizer and just making it look, yeah, you know, something maybe more like this with the kind of sunburst thing going on. And we've got some bubbles and stuff inside our hand sanitizer, so that'll be a lot of fun. So anyway, I'm taking inspiration uh, from premium products like Cologne or Spirits. And um, again, Pinterest is my go-to. So with that, we are going to get into the tutorial. I'm gonna move on over to Keyshot. Today, we're gonna to be running Keyshot 9.1 Pro. Um, most of the features should be available in Keyshot 8 or newer, I believe. So we are going to import our model. Again, if you have gone to willgibbons.com slash downloads and downloaded your project files, you're gonna to wanna to grab the hand sanitizer step file. Uh, I modeled this in Fusion 360. Uh, if anyone cares, that's what I do most of my modeling in these days. We're gonna take our default import settings as usual, hit import. And I'll take a second to address this layout. Um, you might have seen a layout like this before in my Keyshot user interface. Um, I like working with my geometry view quite often. So that's this window on the right. And then this is the real-time view on the left. If you want to open your geometry view, you can hit O on the keyboard or go up to window and then enable geometry view. And then I dock mine on the right because I often like to manage and organize and move parts around in my scene on the right while maintaining a camera angle in the real-time view. Just personal preference items. Now, since this is a pretty vertical product, we're gonna go ahead and change our canvas or I guess our, our aspect ratio. We're gonna go up to window, no, image, and we're gonna go to portrait. And we can go with one of these vertical, you know, more three by four, four by five, um, now, I will mention, I actually use a custom aspect ratio. If I go into image and then down to my resolution presets and I go down to custom, I have two that I like quite a bit. Two to one is a kind of a cinema scope, twice as wide as it is tall. I really like this for a lot of images. But if you're going to social media with this, which I think I will be doing, I have a custom which is IG half portrait 540 by 675. So. This is half the resolution of your Instagram portrait mode image. This is the largest image you can post on Instagram. And I actually did this by going, if you wanna learn how, over to the image tab in the project panel. And then you can set your resolution here. If you go down to presets and then into custom, you can build your own custom presets. And the reason I have mine set to half, so the full width is 1080 by 13, 1850, I believe. Hopefully I've got that right. I just cut it in half because sometimes I'm not always on, either I'm not on a big enough screen for it or I don't want it to take up this full screen. So I just set mine to half resolution. And then what you can do is go and unlock the actual resolution, but it will maintain your aspect. And if I resize my window, it goes to full screen. And you know, regardless of our, so you can see 1080, by uh, 1350 would not actually fit on my display because I don't have a high enough resolution. So this is why I do this. Hopefully that whole sidebar made sense there. Um, okay, so I'll go ahead and, let's go ahead and set our camera angle. Um, I don't like, I, I really don't like the default 50. We're gonna set ours to something pretty conservative. Let's go to 70 and I may even go up higher than that. Let's take a look at our model. So if we go to our project panel scene tree, we have our hand sanitizer. We have three different pieces, and if I turn them off, we have a cap. So there's the cap that I made. You can see it's got the little butterfly bow tie thing on the back and this little 
tab here, and there's some internal detail, but nothing too crazy. I didn't do threads or anything like that. Then I've got my liquid for the hand sanitizer. And finally, I have the hand sanitizer container. Again, no threads, sorry, it's not as detailed as some of my other models. Just so you understand how this is working, um, let's go ahead and use the cutaway view. So I'm gonna go to edit, add geometry, add a cube. Let's scale our cube up. Grab the yellow, drag to the right, move this guy over here. Uh, I think that should do. So let's go ahead and double click this and use a cutaway material. And now we can see inside this model. So what's important, and I'll hit S to turn off shadows. So what's important to understand is that we have a model with thickness. So this is a shelled object, this hand sanitizer container. And I might as well name it. So that's gonna be this top piece. If you wanna rename something, go to properties, name it to container. And then the next one down is gonna be liquid. Okay, that's easier to keep track of. And then we'll call this last one cap. Very good. So next thing I wanted to point out is that the liquid for the hand sanitizer is modeled in such a way that it intersects the wall thickness of the container. So what do I mean by that? Can I zoom in close enough to see? This cutaway material is a little tough to see. I'm gonna turn on shadows with S. So what's going on here, if I can get really close in here, we have a liquid, and the, so the thickness of our plastic container is half a millimeter, and then this liquid protrudes into it a quarter of a millimeter. So all the way around, we have a liquid that protrudes right into the container. This is the way we can take advantage of Keyshot's nested dielectrics, which just is a fancy way of saying that we have two transparent um, refractive material inside another. So I'll go ahead and save this real quick. Let's get rid of that cube, or we're just gonna turn it off for now. We'll use it later. So first things first, let's set up our basic materials. I'm gonna double click on my cap and we're gonna go down to um, a plastic. We'll leave it at its basic color for now. And then we're gonna double click on our container and we'll make this just a solid glass. So why would we want this to be glass if it's made of plastic? Well, solid glass renders nice and fast in Keyshot. It also has this transparency distance slider, which makes it uh, more realistic. And then let's go ahead and turn this off. So I'm gonna hold Control, Alt, and left click to hide this, and then double click on our liquid. Let's change it to a liquid material. Uh, da, da, da. And this amber color is actually really cool. Uh, we can have fun with this. I know lots of health and medical, um, the color palette is generally blue for like calmness. <laughs> uh, we could make this seem a little premium with this color but let's give the good old kind of turquoise blue, the kind of medical staple color a shot. So this is cool, but what I wanna do is put bubbles in here because that's even cooler. <laughs> so double click on this guy and go to the material graph. When we're in the material graph, right click and go down to geometry and grab your bubbles node and plug this guy right into geometry. Double click on bubbles and let's just hit execute and see what happens. So right away, it looks pretty good. Um, now, they're perfectly round. I would love to have some kind of irregularity to them, but unfortunately, we don't have that in Keyshot quite yet. Uh, but we can do a couple other things. Let's make them a touch smaller. So let's go down to 0.7 for the size. And let's take our size variation and maybe make it two. So we have uh, more variation between the largest and smallest. And then our density, let's bring this up to say 0.15, um, so 50% um, more dense. And then let's leave the rest and try execute. There we go. So that one is still looking way too big. I wanna bring the max size down. So let's take our size smaller to 0.5 and try execute again. There we go. Now, if we're saying that most of our bubbles are too small, but then some are too big, we can reduce the size variation. So bring this back down to one. And since we reduce the overall size, then they should all get smaller. There we go. I'm liking that. If you wanna go with more bubbles, you can, but I think too many is gonna look a little weird and not so realistic. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and turn on our container. Let's go to our scene tree and find our container, turn that on. Um, it's not looking so hot, uh, that's not so good. 
let's make sure that we are in product mode. So let's go to our lighting tab and go into product mode. Oh, that's so much better. Okay. So why the heck did that make a difference? Well, we needed something called um, global illumination a little bit, but we mainly needed enough ray bounces. If we bring this down to six and hit enter, that's not so hot. Let's talk about ray bounces. Every time light transmits through a surface that's transparent, we consume a ray bounce. So if you're getting black inclusions like this in anything that should be clear, try increasing your ray bounces. We'll go to 14 and that's looking pretty good. Now, if we still have a few more remaining, we could go higher. If I try 28 and hit enter, you'll notice that there is almost no difference. Basically, the goal is to increase this to the point where you don't see a visual difference. So if I go back down to 14 and hit enter, um, and then back up to 28, here's one of the biggest differences you're gonna get. Inside our geometry, these little refractions with these dark black edges, those get brighter. So if I take this down to 10, you'll see that we have more black outlines in our actual plastic container, which can be distracting. If I bring this up to something crazy like 64 and hit enter, pretty much all those are gonna go away. And now this is really something I only do when I'm totally ready to do my final rendering because 64 ray bounces is a ton. It's generally gonna be overkill, but I found with luxury products where you're doing perfume bottles, cologne, spirits, um, and you have these uh, kind of harder edges in your geometry, um, it's going to create these little black spots. And the only way I've found to get rid of them is go higher on your ray bounces or make sure that your environment doesn't have too much dark black values in it. Uh, for instance, if we go to our environment and I go to studio and I go to something that's got a lot of black in it, you're gonna notice even with a white background, and I did that by hitting C on the keyboard, we'll get lots of black and dark gray refractions in our bottle. Now our hand sanitizer material looks great, but the black areas all around are very distracting. So that's where I'm gonna recommend we go to more of a washed out so um, environment. So like this light tent, if I try this, it's got more white values. That looks quite a bit nicer. And this little hint of dark gradient helps um, give some depth to our material. Even the startup environment is pretty good in this case, but it's a little dull. It lacks that depth. So you could try something like startup balanced for a little more contrast, or you could go and make your own. It's entirely up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and rock either the light tent white and closed. That's a little flat to me. Maybe the light tent white floor. I think this one looks the best so far. Okay, let's double click on our plastic bottle and let's change the actual plastic bottle to a grayscale value. So I'm gonna change, I'm in Kelvin. I need to go to HSV, kill my saturation, hit okay. It's not looking so good anymore. Now our actual liquid material is not looking very so what the heck, um, let's go ahead and fix that. And the reason we're getting this effect is because of the mismatch between our index of refraction. So our glass material has an index of refraction of 1.5. And I'll actually bring this down to 1.46 because this is a plastic. And all of a sudden we're back to blue. That's interesting. Let's actually look at the material that our liquid is made out of. So I'll right click on the liquid and say material, edit material, and we'll see it also shares a refractive index of 1.5. If I make this 1.46, we are back to the same issue of gray. And that is because when the refractive index matches on these two, you're not gonna get the color to read correctly. So they should be different from one another, even if they're only slightly different. So this is a hand sanitizer, which is mostly liquid based. It's kind of like a mix of aloe gel and um, rubbing alcohol. And rubbing alcohol has a refractive index of one point, I think I read it was three seven. So I'm gonna just go with that. And that looks pretty good. Now it's also too blue. So let's reduce the overall saturation. I want this to be fairly subtle, nothing crazy. And finally, our glass bottle is still a little light. So I'm gonna bring this down in value to more of a gray because even though we want it to be pretty clear, we still need it to have a little bit of color to it or at least grayscale value. And now we've done a lion's share of the work. Uh, we can dial in this cap and everything else, but we want to go back to our example perhaps and say, if we're gonna go into this premium branding territory, we need to increase our contrast. We need to either have 
some nice gradient in the background or some dark background, something like that. So we're gonna spend some time on setting up our scene and making it look more interesting, especially with the lighting. So how do we do this? Uh, let's start with a ground plane. You hit Control G as in gamma for a ground plane. And if I want to take this ground plane, uh, we can set it to a more reflective material. I like to use just a black shiny plastic. So we can go to our ground material type and change it to a plastic and just go to diffuse black and specular white. So this is just a pure reflective black material or sorry, um, plastic. Now what's really nice is by getting low with our camera angle, just by doing this with our um, plane reflecting our HDRI, we're actually getting a nice kind of faded gradient background. Like that right there actually looks pretty nice with so little effort. But of course we wanna go and do something even more interesting. Uh, we could go and, um, well, let's do this. Let's actually start by adding a backdrop plane. We're gonna right click on this plane that we added and we're gonna duplicate it. So down to do, 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 duplicate part. And then we wanna rotate it 90 degrees. I'm gonna hold shift to snap at 90. And I'm gonna pull this all the way back and we don't want it just butting up against this back plane. We actually want it even further away because we want a space between those because we're going to shine a light in there to create a cool gradient. And I'll pull this up so it's nice and large. And also, I'm also noticing we're clipping because our environment is actually small. If I hit E to show our environment, see it's not very big. Or uh, our plane's basically sticking out. We don't want that. Let's go to our environment and make sure it's uh, 2,000 millimeters. Same with the ground plane. And we'll turn off ground shadows because we don't need them. And here's why we don't need them. It's because we have physical ground planes and they will always catch shadows even if ground shadows are disabled. So we can just basically turn that feature off. Now for our backdrop, we don't want this to have the same material. So let's go ahead and double click it, right click, and then unlink material and let's change it to a diffuse and let's set that to kind of a light gray. So diffuse material just doesn't, uh, doesn't have specular reflections. Um, so that means it's not really shiny and we're gonna shine a light up. Now, if we go into our cube that we added, take that cube and we're gonna double click on it and change its material to just a uh, diffuse and we're gonna move it. Let's go and hit our position move tool and let's move this to the back. And we actually wanna bring it down out of sight so it's below the ground plane and position it right between these two planes. I'll hit C on the keyboard to go back to a white background for now. Now this cube is gonna become a light. So let's double click it and change it to a spotlight, which is fairly new, um, spotlight. You could use an IES light if you don't have spotlight as an option, if you're on an older version of Keyshot. Now I don't see my spotlight. So I'm gonna hit L on the keyboard for light and that brings up your light indicator. It's pointing down, so we have to turn it up. So let's go to our move tool and rotate this 90 degrees. And we start to see, well, maybe not a full 90, but we start to see it on the wall. And this is what we want. Now this is where our geometry view comes into play. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the green checkbox. Let's set up our camera just temporarily. We'll do a new camera and we'll go to a standard front view, zoom in. And what we need to do is kind of position our camera and our, and our uh, yeah, our camera to have our model the way we want it. And I'm gonna go for almost a straight on view. If you go a little low, it's like uh, you're an ant looking up at a skyscraper. We want this to look a little bit more normal. Uh, so we're more of a straight front view. I think that's gonna be pretty good. I'm gonna zoom in because I wanna be closer to the object, kind of frame up our final shot here. Okay, and I'm gonna to try to straighten everything up a little bit more. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Now we'll make a couple changes and I'll tell you just a second here, but I think that's gonna be pretty good for now. I'm gonna go ahead and save that. We'll, we'll dial that in as needed later. Now what we can do is work in the geometry view on the right, which is awesome. So I'm gonna move this over and in the geometry view, we're now in a third person point of view. And you can change that by using your camera drop down. We're in um, ortho, uh, it helps with lining things up in my opinion. So we see this little dot and red thing. 
That means our light is there and it's currently selected. So I'm gonna right click and say move selection. It looks like I can't. Let's try this again. Grab the cube, right click, move selection. There we go. And now we can go ahead and move this as needed and see how it changes in the real time view. So if I rotate this upward, we're gonna get a wider or a narrower sort of spot uh, point on our spotlight. A couple things, our ground plane goes way too far back. So the horizon line is too high. So we're gonna move some stuff real quick. So what I wanna do is take the ground plane, I'm gonna hold control and click the backdrop plane. And I wanna grab my cube. So I'm holding control and clicking that. I'm gonna move all three of them toward the camera. So I'll right click in the geometry view, move selection, pull it forward. Now they're all moving toward the camera. And that means our horizon line is dropping, uh, is coming closer to the back of our hand sanitizer model. Good, I want that in this case. And then what we can do if needed is we can move the other items. I'll hit the green checkbox, I'll hit save. Okay, now let's go ahead and just work on positioning our light. So let's grab that cube, right click, move selection. And now we can kind of see if I go and change my view to a top view, in the geometry view, you can see that my cube is off. So I'm gonna move it over to center it. And there we go. And now I can move it down and I'll use the green arrow to move it down. It's also way too bright. It's kind of blowing everything out. So let's go ahead and accept that position and reduce the brightness. 100 watts is a lot. Let's go to lumen. Let's type in 1600 lumen because fun fact, 1600 lumen is about the brightness of a 100 watt incandescent light bulb. Okay, so I'm gonna use constant light output and that means it's gonna focus all that light into the cone of our uh, spotlight. And I'm thinking this is actually looking good. We have a nice gradient and it's illuminating the contents of our hand sanitizer. We're actually backlighting, it, which is cool. Green checkbox to accept that position. What else do we wanna do? We have this kind of distracting ground plane. We could do better with that. Um, we got some black or dark reflections here. Uh, we have to dial in our lighting a bit. Also, I'm gonna change my camera not from a 70, or sorry, from a 70 mil to a 100. And that's gonna further flatten out the scene. But notice it brought us to more of an orthographic view, really emphasizing the shape of the bottle, but also moving the ground plane down a little bit. So we have a few options. We can go with this kind of black, glossy, reflective material. Let's take a look at our backdrop, double click that, and now we can play with our diffuse color. Do we want this to be really dark? And then that way we kind of pop our bottle silhouette against it. Uh, or do we want it to be very light because the lighter it is, it really shows these bubbles off. So there are gonna be pros and cons and trade-offs to what you use for your backdrop and everything. Let's just try dark and see what happens. Um, and then that means of course our light needs to get brighter. Go to our cube, let's double this, 3200 and 10,000. Again, I like to start with realistic values, but then after a while you have to kind of push them. So let's try uh, 15,000, and that's probably gonna be as bright as I'll wanna go. Let's add some color. Uh, if we went with a warm temp light, it's going to give us this weird greenish color that doesn't look very appealing um, in the sanitizer. So um, while yellowish and warmer temps really kind of read as luxurious, I think we're gonna have to go with more of a natural blue light um, or maybe even something a little more uh, magenta in order to move this, you know, kind of fight the color contamination here that's going on. I'm gonna go ahead and play with this. Now we can also really boost it and go with like a vibrant color. And I think that this will make it look a lot more interesting and eye-catching. So I'm gonna go and take some creative liberties to play with and push these color values really quite Far, I think. I'm liking it, but we're getting this dark reflection on the top surface. This is probably this surface reflecting this dark ground plane. I don't know that there's a lot we can do about that. We could change our camera angle so we don't see as much of the top of this. Uh, so maybe we try that. Let me see real quick. We can go back here. I'm gonna go in the geometry view to our top and make sure that my camera is centered and squared up. So it's not, so I'm gonna right click and say, move active camera position. I'm gonna scoot this on over so we're straight on. And now we can move it down. So we're not looking at it from an angle, we'll look straight at it. And this is going to help reduce those dark reflections a little bit. 
it's also going to move our ground plane further down. And um, I think that's gonna benefit us. So if we go to a true side view, um, da, 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 let's go right. I can kind of straighten out that plane a little bit. And this is just gonna be subjective. I think I'm gonna focus on moving. Well, yeah, I don't wanna go too far down. Oh, we're almost there. We're looking pretty good. This white cap is a little boring. Maybe we could play with that. I don't know. Um, we could go brighter just to a pure white. Let's just go with white. Now, as far as this ground plane, we may be able to play with this. Now, if you want, you could cut down the reflectivity by reducing the specularity. If you want it to be even shinier, you could go and boost the refractive index. So like five or something. Uh, 1.5 is fine for me. Now, if this edge is distracting, we could do a couple of things. We could try to fade it out so it's less um, annoying or eye-catching. So let's go ahead and try that. Here's how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna go ahead and save my camera angle because we have not done that yet. And I'm gonna go back to the free camera and zoom out. And what we wanna do is add a texture to this ground plane. So go ahead and double click it. Go to textures for opacity. We'll right click and go down to uh, textures and color gradient. And it's going from left to right. We want to rotate it. So let's go ahead and click on that and hit, let's go ahead and just hit move texture and grab the green, hold shift. And we want the black to be toward the back. So it's pure black at the back edge. Now this is where it's interesting. Our scale is the size of our ground plane. Let's make it very small, like five millimeters. That means we have a transition from pure white to pure black that is five millimeters. Let's go 10, soften it a bit. Now let's push this back toward the very edge. We want that back edge to be pure black fading to white. And that's going to ba basically give us a gradient. Ah, I did it backward. Let's switch our black and white values. I'm sorry. There we go. So we've got our black ground plane fading away to nothing. And it looks a little bit odd there. Let's maybe try five again. It's a little bit better. From this angle, it looks weird, but let's try our other camera angle. Um, now we have a softer edge. What I'm gonna do is this. I think I'll go somewhere in the middle. I'll go back to that material and we'll do something like five millimeters just to soften the edge a bit. Then I'm gonna go ahead in the right geometry view and I'm gonna just move this back a little bit so it's even closer to the edge of the bottle and that might help quite a bit, I'm hoping. So how close can we get it before it looks weird? Just depends on what you wanna do. I think the ideal spot is somewhere around there and we're looking pretty good. Now, this is a very, very basic setup. Uh, we still have just a regular environment. And if I cut this down to like 0.1 to make it really dark, now we're being lit pretty much just by that one light that's underneath everything. And that's what gives us the dark bubbles, which is quite cool. Um, but the rest of our object is pretty dark as well. So we need to balance having some contrast for these interesting refractions with just lighting it universally and just washing it out too much. Now we could add more lights um, if you wanna go further. Um, we can go ahead and try that. But overall, this is, this is kind of the basic idea. We can also play with this backdrop. Let's go even darker and really push this, this kind of gradient that we get toward the edges. And let's go even higher on the brightness of our light, 30,000. That looks pretty good. Now, one thing, I'm gonna close my heads up display with H. Um, I wanna make sure that this, it should be fairly centered, but it could be distracting if that gradient isn't centered. The other thing is if we wanna move that cube, we can play with that gradient and how much it fills of our background. If I go really dramatic and just pull the whole thing up, I mean, we're blowing it out with the color. It's kind of ridiculous, but um, kind of like that. Now, a couple things on this material for this glass. We have this kind of gray glass. If we play with it, um, we can make it brighter. All right, I'm gonna double click on this bottle cap and bring the top, the plastic part back to white, pure white. The last thing that you could do if you want to is set up a couple more physical lights if you didn't want to rely on this HDRI so much. Uh, in order to do that, go ahead and add a plane. So we're gonna hit Control-5. That adds a plane, and then I'm gonna move it up and then in the geometry view, we'll go ahead and move, move this part, rotate it 90 degrees, holding shift, move it back, rotate it. So we're gonna go for this kind of three quarter style view or angle. And let's go ahead and double click on it. Let's set it to be an area light. 
and now we get this nice sharp reflection on the side of our bottle. If we turn off the other lights in our scenes, let's take our, our HDRI down to zero, and let's also take our cube and turn that off. This is just with our area light. So if we take our area light, make it more neutrally colored, notice we get these nice, you know, sharp specular highlights, but the bubbles look really, really cool in the hand sanitizer. I'm thinking to control that reflection, maybe we make this taller and skinnier. So right click on it and do, if we just do move part and then we click on axis local and then scale, you can scale this guy down, go skinnier and a little bit taller. So we have that line all the way to the top and then let's just move it off the ground plane a bit. There we go. Alrighty. So that's a nice little reflection that we have going on. What if we have this on the same side, or sorry, the other side, select it. Let's actually go and duplicate it, duplicate part and green checkbox and right click in the geometry view and say move. Oh, we have to select it again for some reason. It's hard to select stuff there. Let's just click in the, real, in the scene tree. Let's grab this, right click, move selection. And to rotate it around, I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and just uh, hit pick and then choose our bottle and hit OK. And then I'll just rotate this guy. Oh, notice what's happening. It's shearing and messing it all up It's because our axis is set to local. Let's hit this red X and try that again. Move selection, change it to global and then hit pick. Uh, cap is good and then rotate it. That should not happen now. Very cool. So now we have these two reflections on either side and the further around the edges you move it, you know, obviously the more, you know, different, different re reflections you'll get. Um, if you don't want it to be perfectly symmetrical, we can have one off to the side. What's our brightness? A thousand. Let's try 1500 on both of those. Now we have more ambient light in our scene. I have a feeling our bottle cap is going to get a little too bright. Let's take this down to 80% white. And now let's try reintroducing our cube for the background. And it's pretty cool. So now what we have going on is we've got these two specular highlights. And we have these nice highlights on our bottle and these cool dark bubbles because our environment is totally dark. So as we increase our brightness for the HDRI, we're going to lighten everything up as well. So our bubbles kind of don't look so dark and our container is looking a little bit better just to have a little bit more pop in there. All right, I think we're pretty much there. Um, okay, so the other thing I wanna do is actually reduce the brightness of those two lights, uh, planes that we added because they're blowing out a couple areas a little bit. So let's try a thousand again, just go back down to a thousand. I wanna add a little bit of texture to this bottle. And so we're gonna go down to our textures and under bump, right click textures, noise fractal. Uh, let's take this down to a very small scale. We're talking, let's try 0.5 millimeters, which is quite small. We may even have to go smaller yet, but the bump height is where we're really gonna cut back. We're gonna do 0 0.05 and see how that looks. Still not good. 0 0.02, and that should be just enough to add a little bit of irregularity on the surface. We can also do a touch of roughness if we really want to. I'm thinking of taking the scale from 0.5 down to 0.25, so it's really teeny. And then roughness 0 0.005, 0 0.001, just a tiny bit. Yeah, we got a little bit of noise in there, so if your computer doesn't like rendering this and it's taking too long for that to clear up, you could always reduce those, you know, and go without the noise. Then for the top here, we want to go to our textures. Um, I'm actually gonna cut the specularity a bit because those reflections are pretty bright. And I want to go and take the roughness and do a 0 0.0 one. The asymmetry issue is bothering me on this, so I'm going to go ahead and go back and move this plane so it's more balanced and maybe even cut down on the brightness even further. This is more supposed to be just kind of a, I'm flipping on the camera, just working through something kind of in real time so you can see the process I would take. My shortest tutorials are the ones that take the longest because I have to do them a couple times and edit them down a lot. So if you guys don't mind this type of format that's a little bit more casual, let me know. Uh, because they're definitely easier and faster to produce, which is cool. What if this is brighter instead of darker? And then what if we actually change the brightness of that cube? Let's just take this way down to like 500 lumen or 100. And then let's take our diffuse, maybe not white. Now, one thing we could do is actually color our backdrop. 
So what if we color our backdrop and then we have just a white light on it? So here's a colored backdrop. Let's go darker and then take our light and then let's reduce its overall saturation. That's a bit less distracting. Um, our bubbles don't jump out as much, which is a bit of a bummer, but um, we could, I'm turning down the HDRI and then playing with some of these other lights now. What about these planes? Let's try 1200. And then let's try our cube in the background again, a little higher. Um, I'm pretty happy with where it ended. You know, you can obviously make a lot of changes to this if, if you don't like this exact look or this exact approach. Um, if my if the noise in here is too much and it's just not going away, go into those lights and make sure your samples are high enough. I'll take mine all the way up to 20, which is, you know, I'd say it's quite high, but it usually helps. And then this material with the glass under roughness, let's take this up as well, 20 uh, should do it. Overall, there you have it. And like I said, if you have issues with those, the graininess remaining in this thing, then you're going to go ahead and you can kill the roughness, kill the small texture and, um, you know, just let it go. You could also even try the denoise feature, which is this button up here. Um, if I let this sit for a few seconds, it'll stamp all that out, but it's a little too strong. So if I bring it down to say 0.5, we see there's a little bit of noise still Maybe I'll leave it at 0.5 and see how that cleans up. Oh, of course we need some bloom because why not? Let's add some bloom, a bit of radius. So it gets the, the glowy look. Everyone likes their glow, their drama. Bring up our bloom threshold to only have that glow or um, bloom appear at the brightest areas. I like to bring that so it's, it's glowing a bit and then maybe just reduce the intensity so it's not so, so obvious. 0.7 is fine. Cool. So the heads up display, I'll hit H. I'm at 50 samples. Maybe I'll render this at about 300 or so to really clean up the, the noise in there. But I'm thinking that's it. Um, not the craziest tutorial, not the, probably not the most exciting, but um, hoping you guys make some use of this. Hoping you guys enjoy it. And uh, yeah, if you got requests, let me know. Um, we'll be doing more of this how to render series, hopefully still publishing on Mondays. But until next time, you guys, uh, stay safe. Also, if you do anything using this technique or even render this bottle or anything with it, use the model, uh, tag me on Instagram at Will Gibbons Design, and I'll uh, reshare your post and uh, that type of thing. I'd love to see what you guys do with this. So until next time, guys, happy rendering.